Corporate finance practice problem using OneNote. Stock dividend and cash dividend impact on the equity section. Get ready. It's time to take our chance with corporate finance. Here we are in OneNote. If you have access to OneNote, would like to follow along, you're not required to, but if would like to, we're in the icon on the left-hand side, Practice Problems tab, then down in the 1823 Stock Dividend and Cash Dividend Impact on Equity section tab. Also note, when using OneNote, look at the Immersive Reader tool. Our presentations will be also down here in the text area, same name, same number, but with transcripts, transcripts that can be translated into multiple different languages and either listened to or read in them. Closing the icon, information up top, calculations on down below. We're looking at the stock dividend and cash dividend and their impact on the equity section. Therefore, we'll start off here with the equity section. Noting that the equity section, in essence, part of the balance sheet, assets equal liabilities plus equity or Assets minus liabilities equals equity. Equity then representing the owner's, the owner's claim to the assets of the company as opposed to the debtor claims or the liabilities claim to the assets. Now, remember, when we think about the equity section, we can think about it in total, which would be down here at the 295000 kind of the net book value of the company, assets minus liabilities. And that would be the total equity kind of claim to the company would be similar to any other type of business, whether it be a sole proprietorship or a partnership. Where things differ then will be the breakout of the equity section by the owners in some way. Partnerships, you actually have to list the partners. When you talk about a corporation, because we have standardized units, we just need to have the major categories of the cash that, that has been included in the equity section or the part amounts in the equity section so we usually have that by the investment portion common stock here in the in the capital in excess of par and then the retained earnings the earnings that the company has generated over and above the capital investment so here we have the 15,000 shares that represents of course shares that were issued out from the company to the to the shareholders and then of course they received cash or something in return for the issuance of the shares. That doesn't mean it could be that the existing holders of the share actually traded the shares somewhere else. So it might not be the same owners you know, that have the shares now, but it represents basically the initial investment of owners by shareholders into the company. And then we have the par value. That's gonna be a, a arbitrary number in that it's not gonna be the market price. It's not really what we sold it for. It's a nice even number or a number that makes it nice and easy at least for us to calculate the common stock and the shares without it jumping around or varying with the market price as we sh as we issue different shares as time passes. So then we're going to issue the shares for something over and above the equity, uh, the, the par value, and the difference then is going to be going into the capital in excess of par. Therefore, the 75000 plus 40000 represents the owner's, in essence, investment in the company through the purchasing of stocks from the company. The retained earnings here at the 180,000 represents the earnings of the company that would flow through the income statement into the balance sheet that have accumulated, that have not yet been given back to the owners in the form of dividends. That's why they are retained. So if we have that 115 plus the 295,000, we're gonna to get to that, uh, let's do that one more time, the 75,000 plus 40,000, Plus the 180000, that's going to give us our 295. That gets us up to the 295,000. We have the stock market price. This is not indicated by the firm, but by the market, $7 stock dividend at the 5%. So we're going to be given the 5% stock dividend, not really a split here, but a dividend taking place, a little bit more complicated generally. Then, then after the stock dividend, we're also going to give a cash dividend after we have the more stocks out there because of the stock dividend. All right, let's do this. So at the end of this thing, we're going to have the equity section looking uh, something like this. So uh, and, and so this is kind of a, a first recap of what we would expect to happen. I just want to point out here that the total down here is going to be the same. We have the, we have the 295. This is just going to be after we have uh, the stock dividend before the cash dividend. So in other words, once we have the, the stock dividend, we're going to end up with the same total amount, the 295 that we can see down here. But then there will be a variant with the number of shares that will be issues as we, as we can see that that has changed. Par value will not change because it's not really a stock split 
but a stock dividend. We have a change to the common stock. That's because, of course, the shares changed and the par value did not. Multiplying those two together has a change here. Capital in excess of par will change. And the retained earnings also changes due to the fact that it, it is, once again, not a split, but a dividend. And therefore, the owners of the company are still getting something, even though it's not cash. There's still a distribution of the earnings in value, those being the value of stocks. So let's and, and note that the cash dividend, dividend will differ when the cash dividend takes place. We will have a decrease in retained earnings and the other side will be cash that's going out on the asset side of things. All right, let's take a look at this. We got the, the equity section uh, of the cash. Let's look at the cash side of things. After we have the cash dividend that goes out, then we're going to have this change to the total equity here. So the total equity will actually go down and then the retained earnings will also be going down because that's going to be a more simple type of transaction because we're just basically cash is going down on the asset side of things and equity is going down in terms of retained earnings because there we would have issued the cash dividend that at the 10 cents. Okay, let's finally get down to the calculations. Enough with the recaps. Let's get down to the calculations. So we got, let, let's first, we're thinking about the stock dividend here at the 5%. So we're going to look at the beginning shares that we had at the start, those shares being then the 15,000. And then we're going to have a 5% stock dividend. So 15,000 times 5 means we're going to be issuing 15,000 times 0 0.05. 750 new shares are going out there through the dividend. So stock dividend, 750 shares in the dividend. So the common stock after the dividend then, of course, will be the starting point, 15,000 shares that we started with. And now we have the new shares of the 750. So how many shares are out there right now? 15,750. That one, I won't even put that one in the calculator, even though I'm... So then we're going to say the par value is the same. The par value does not change. We still have five at the par. So that's going to be 15,750 times the $5 par value. And that's going to give us the 78,750. Now, note what's going to happen here, as we saw in the recap, we can see that there's going to be a decrease from the retained earnings to the value that uh, is being received by the stockholders because they're receiving value. That will be basically at the market price, which in this case is $7. The other side has to happen somewhere in the equity section because as we can see up here, the equity section, this is after the, the stock dividend, needs to be the same. Therefore, it, the other side is going to be up here between the common stock and the capital in excess of par. The common stock will take care of itself automatically because the $5 par value will not change and we will have changed the shares. And the difference then is going to be in the capital in excess of par. If that did not make complete sense, that's okay. We're going to go through it and then we'll recap it again. And at the end, it's going to make complete sense. Sense will have been made. So we're sense makers here. We make we make sense. That's what we do for a living. So in any case, we have the capital in excess of par. We're looking at the capital in excess of par now. New shares at the 750. We have the stock market price. So this is going to be the market price now. $5 of it we have already taken care of with the common stock uh, par value. The par value automatically took care of the 5 out of the 7. So 7 minus 5 is 2. The difference, the 750 times 2 is going to be the change in the capital in excess of par. So we're going to then take the 750, uh, the 750 times 2 is, is 1,500. And then the starting point that we started at was the 40,000 plus the change of the 1,500 gives us 41,500. That 41,500 is what's going to go here now. So we're going to change this to that 41,500, this uh, amount of the 15,750 changed times five gave us that change to the 78,750. Now we need to change the retained earnings because it will be going down for the value of the stocks that we gave out, which we're gonna say is the new stock times the $7 stock uh, price. So let's do that then, let's do that. So we got the retained earnings. The retained earnings starting point is at that 180,000. The new shares are at the 750. The market is going to be at the $7 market price. So the 750 times 7, that's going to give us the 1,005. Well, I'm sorry, 1,250. And so then we got the 180 starting point. 
minus what we gave out, not in dollars, but in value of shares, which is the 5,250, giving us the ending balance in retained earnings at the 174,750. So that, there's what we have here. So then let's just give a quick recap before we get into the cash dividend here. So on the recap, we can see here's our starting point over here in the equity section. Retained earnings is going down by the value that's going out, even though it's not cash, even though the value is basically in the stock dividend. How we calculate that value is going to be the price times the new shares, which is the 750. The price is seven. Now note, we cannot change. We're not going to change the net or total equity section at the 295 when we do the stock dividend. So something else has to change, which would of course need to be the common stock and the paid in capital to balance out the fact that we're going to lower the retained earnings. The, the common stock will be adjusted due to the fact that we're going to have more shares of the 750, this 15,000 changing to 15,750, which will automatically make the adjustment for the $5 par value. So the $5 par value will adjust the common stock, then the difference here, meaning the seven minus five times the new shares 750 will be the calculation that happens to the capital account that we showed here. So to recap, we have the 174,750 that has been included, that should be included up here, 174,750. We then have the 15 to the 15,750 and the 78,750 in the common stock. So 15,750 times five gives us the 78,750 and the capital in excess of the par 41,500, 41,500. And we get to the same bottom line number. The bottom line is right there. It's on the bottom. We should put a line under it because that's the bottom line at the 295, still at the 295. Now let's do the, the, the stock dividend. So now that we have these new shares out there, the 750 new shares plus the old shares, we're going to be issuing the stock dividend at 10 cents. This should be straightforward. This is standard dividend stuff here. Nothing special, nothing crazy, except the fact that we have some new dividends there. So now we're going to say the, the starting uh, retained earnings is going to be at the 174,750. This is the starting point after we made that adjustment. And then we're, we're going to say the dividends are 10 cents per share. And now there's 15,750 shares out there after we had issued the, the increase. So we had that 15,750 after the 750 new shares are out there from the stock dividend. So 10 cents times the 15,750 gives us 1,575. And then we're going to take the 174,750, the retained earnings, the earnings that had been retained that had not yet been distributed out in the form of dividends, which now 1,500,750 5, is being distributed in the form of dividends. Therefore, it goes down to 174,750 5, minus 1,575 5, to 173,175 for the retained earnings. So at the end of the day there, after the retained earnings takes into consideration we now have the retained earnings at the 173, 175. That does impact or change the total equity as we can see between our three different equity sections from this activity here. And the other side would be on the assets, of course. The cash went down. That's what we paid with the dividends. Cash went down. The other side's the retained earnings. So beginning point, this is where we started. This is where we started. Then we had the, the cash or the stock dividend, 5% stock dividend increasing the shares by that 750 times the par value increases the common stock retained earnings also went down by the value of the stocks that we issued and the other side is still in the equity section here taking place within the common stock the difference going to the additional paid in capital which would be the seven minus five times the 750 and then we had the cash dividend, which further decreased the retained earnings by the 10 cents times how many shares were out there, which was the 10, 15,750 decrease in the retained earnings. Other side then going to cash, decreasing the cash. So that does result in a decrease in the total equity section.